in the previous video, we looked at the need for the second law of thermodynamics. Um, before we jump into formally stating the second law of thermodynamics or making up the statements that comprise of the second law of thermodynamics, we need to understand a few key concepts um, of uh, relating to the second law of thermodynamics. And one of the key concepts is that of a thermal energy reservoir, right? So uh, we're going to be looking at in this video, uh, thermal energy reservoir. So what is a thermal energy reservoir? It's a, um, it, it's a concept and also in many practical applications, it is actually physically present. It is a system or it is an object that can uh, either absorb or give out finite quantities of energy without changing its temperature, right? So for example, large oceans, uh, fast moving rivers, large lakes, ponds can usually be thought of as thermal energy reservoirs because we can dump heat into them or we can take heat from them and their temperature will not change appreciably. So uh, for example, if we have a room, a large room and a rather small uh, cell phone, then the room air can be treated as a thermal energy reservoir as far as the cell phone is concerned because the operation of the cell phone does not really appreciably change the temperature of the air in the room, right? So um, a body that can absorb or give out finite quantities of energy um, without changing its temperature is a thermal energy reservoir. Some examples again uh, being uh, large lakes, um, rivers, oceans, atmosphere, right? Um, <clears throat> how do we decide if something is a thermal energy reservoir or not? There is no one answer to that question. So it is that relative to the quantity of energy that is being dumped into the reservoir or is being taken from the reservoir, if that quantity of energy uh, the reservoir can either take or give without changing its temperature appreciably, then we can treat that as a thermal energy reservoir. If its temperature changes appreciably, then uh, we cannot treat that as a thermal energy reservoir. So going back to the example of the cell phone in the room, we know that the energy that is dissipated by the cell phone ends up uh, warming the room up. So if we were to be very exact, the room air does not, is not at constant temperature, right? It does increase its temperature, but that temperature increase is so small that we can effectively treat the room air as a thermal energy reservoir, right? And uh, so, so uh, the concept of thermal energy reservoirs is very key to understanding uh, heat engines and to understanding the second law of thermodynamics. Generally speaking, there are two kinds of thermal energy reservoirs. Uh, one is called a source and the other is called a sink. So when energy is derived or extracted from a thermal energy reservoir, that reservoir is called a source. And when energy is dumped or given to a thermal energy reservoir, that kind of energy reservoir is called a, so a sink, right? So, um, so a source is a energy reservoir from which energy is taken out. And a sink is uh, a thermal energy reservoir into which energy is uh, dumped and uh, the reservoir by definition, uh, these finite amount of energies taken out or dumped into these thermal energy reservoirs do not change their temperature, right? Uh, one final point about thermal energy reservoirs is that they do not have to be necessarily large in size to be a good thermal energy reservoir. A simple ice water bath, for example, can be a very good thermal energy reservoir. So if I have a container that has water and also ice, uh, so it has to be an ice water mixture. And as long as there is ice water mixture, um, I can maintain this at zero degrees Celsius. And it will remain at zero degrees Celsius uh, until all the energy supplied is enough to melt all the ice, right? And so if, I, if my energy supply is less than that quantity, then I can be confident that the temperature of this container here with a mixture of ice and water will remain exactly at zero degrees Celsius. And so 
uh, this also acts as a thermal energy reservoir. On the other hand, I can also have substances that are in the uh, inside the vapor dome, right? So I can have something that is inside the vapor dome and uh, substances that are at all these locations are also good thermal energy reservoirs because it is not easy to change their temperatures by adding or removing energy at constant pressure, right? So substances inside the dome which are maintained at constant pressure can also act as thermal energy reservoirs. Similarly, condensing steam or condensing vapor can act as a thermal energy reservoir. And this is used in uh, many places. So for example, um, uh, there are materials known as phase change materials and these can be embedded in the roofs of houses. So for example, in the daytime when uh, the sun is uh, heating up the roof, the materials can absorb this energy and melt and so solid turns into liquid without raising its temperature. So the roof temperature remains low so that the uh, people inside and the things inside can be kept cool. At the same time, at night time, uh, this liquid again solidifies back and thereby uh, without changing the temperature again. And if necessary, uh, the roof can be kept warm at night if this were to be required. So, so these are called phase change materials or these are very useful when we want to add or remove heat without changing temperature. And these are very practical applications. But also as a concept, these are very useful in understanding uh, second law of thermodynamics.